Utah seems to be everyone's dark horse pick when it comes to the college football playoffs. During the Rose Bowl last season, they lost a heartbreaker against Ohio State. They returned most of their production, and the Pac-12 looks to be wide open. The Utes have built their program up over the past two decades, so I thought we should take a look at their rise and why they should be considered a college football playoff contender. First, let's talk about Utah's head coach, Kyle Whittingham, who has been with the Utes for what feels like forever. Whittingham is the longest tenured head coach in the Pac-12 and the second longest tenured FBS coach with one school, only trailing Kurt Ferentz. Whittingham played linebacker at BYU from 1978 to 1981 and earned first-team All-WAC honors and WAC Defensive Player of the Year honors in 1981. He would go on to play for the Denver Gold and New Orleans Breakers of the USFL and Calgary Stampeders of the CFL before joining the Los Angeles Rams replacement squad in 1987. Whittingham began his coaching career as a grad assistant at his alma mater in 1985 and took over the defensive coordinator position at Eastern Utah in 1987. He would then spend five seasons with Idaho State, serving as their linebacker and special teams coach before later being promoted to the defensive coordinator position. In 1994, Kyle would take the defensive line coach position at Utah, serving under his father Fred, who was the defensive coordinator at the time. Whittingham would then take over the defensive coordinator position from his father the following year and served as the Utes defensive coordinator for a decade under both Ron McBride and Urban Meyer. In 2004, Utah became the first BCS non-automatic qualifier conference team to make a BCS Bowl playing in the Fiesta Bowl. After the regular season, Urban Meyer left to take the Florida head coaching job and Whittingham was offered the head coaching position and was also offered the head coaching position at his alma mater, BYU. After four days struggling to make the decision on where he should go, he decided to stay with the Utes and served as a co-head coach with Meyer for the Utes' 2004 Fiesta Bowl win, led by Alex Smith, finishing 13-0. The Whittingham regime started off bumpy as they replaced Alex Smith with Brian Johnson and started the season 3-4. The team would have a strong finish winning four of their last five games, including a 38-10 win over Georgia Tech. The Utes would start off slow once again, but finished strong and won their bowl game. In 2007, after a really rough start, the Utes upset number 9 UCLA, 44-6, their highest ranked win in school history. They fell to cellar dweller UNLV the following week, 27-0, and some wondered whether Whittingham would survive the season. The team rebounded and went on a 7-game win streak before losing their second consecutive game to BYU, but expanded their bowl winning streak to 7 straight with a win over Navy. Utah went undefeated in 2008, which included wins over Michigan, Oregon State, and TCU, but they would play in the Sugar Bowl rather than the national title game, which was played between 12-1 Florida and 12-1 Oklahoma. Utah beat Alabama in the Sugar Bowl 31-17 and finished ranked number two in the AP poll behind Florida, but was named the national champions by Anderson and Hester, MCFR, and W postseason polls. Woodingham won the Paul Bear Bryan Award and the AFCA Coach of the Year Award. They followed that up with a 10-3 record and won their sixth straight bowl game under Whittingham. Early in 2010, Whittingham turned down the opportunity to take over Tennessee, choosing to stay with Utah. The Utes finished the decade with their first bowl loss since 1996, snapping a nine-game bowl win streak, finishing the year 10-3. In 2011, Utah made the jump to the Pac-12 and finished their first year in the conference 8-5, winning the Sun Bowl. In 2012, Utah would miss their first bowl game since 2002, finishing the year 5-7, and, and repeated that performance the following year. In 2014, the Utes bounced back to finish the year 9-4, winning the Las Vegas Bowl. They won their first South Division title, but lost the tiebreaker to represent the South in the title game to USC. They finished 2016 with a 9-4 record, and 2017 with a 7-6 record. In 2018 and 2019, they won the South Division, but lost to Washington and Oregon respectively in the Pac-12 title games. That loss to Oregon in 2019 possibly knocked the Utes out of college football playoff contention as they entered the conference championship week fifth behind the Georgia Bulldogs. In 2020, after an up and down season, Utah finished 3-2 and, and chose not to participate in a bowl game. This past season, they put together a strong season finishing the year 10-4, winning their first Pac-12 conference title in school history, but losing to Ohio State in a crazy Rose Bowl shootout. They beat Oregon twice, who were considered college football playoff contenders. Under Whittingham, the Utes are 144-70 and, and have won the South Division three of the last four years. I just want to take a second and ask if you are enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Also, 
Let me know which team you think will make the college football playoffs this year in the comment section below. The crazy thing about the success Utah has had is the fact that they have not recruited at a high level. Back in 2015, Gabe Encinas writes, He's been doing so with some average talent to say the least. By no means has he been a top-notch recruiter. He's just grabbing local talent, mixed in with some border states, and developing his guys. His first class since joining the Pac-12 was ranked 40th in the nation according to 24-7 Sports. The 2012 class crept up to number 27, dropping back down to 37 in 2013, and even further to number 67 in 2014. His current freshman class came in at number 45, and their 2016 currently sits at 40. Since then, Utah has had a recruiting class ranked anywhere from 30th to the 42nd best in the nation. Yet, Utah continues to send guys to the NFL and develop talent. They are known for a stout defense and running the ball down opponents' throats, a lot like my alma mater, the Wisconsin Badgers, and the national champions, Georgia Bulldogs. Over the past decade, the Utes have slowly built their program to finally win the first Pac-12 title this past season and make it to their first Rose Bowl in program history. Woodingham spoke on the opportunity, saying, Everybody in Salt Lake is elated to be heading down to Southern California for the Rose Bowl. We're excited to come down and experience it. I've got a lot of buddies, old USC guys, that have been to the Rose Bowl several times, and they've said there's nothing that compares to it. We'll travel well. It's something the community is very fired up about. Although the Utes lost to Ohio State 48-45, it felt like it may have been their coming out party on the national level. I truly feel like they can be considered college football playoff contenders, and if not this year, if I was a betting man, I think they can do it within the next decade. So why are the Utes contenders this year? Well, let's first look at their quarterback position. When Utah were bull busters, they were led by Alex Smith in 2004 and Brian Johnson in 2008. Smith was taken first overall in the NFL Draft in 2005, and Johnson was a senior in 2008. Cam Rising was a four-star recruit coming out of high school as a member of the 2018 recruiting class and started his college career at Texas. He transferred to Utah in 2019 and still has multiple years of eligibility. Rising took over the starting quarterback position halfway through the third game of the 2021 season and finished the year throwing for 2,493 yards, 20 touchdowns and 5 interceptions, while also rushing for nearly 500 yards on the ground and 6 touchdowns. Utah returned 66% of their overall production from last year, including 71% of their production on offense and 61% of their production on defense, which ranks 55th nationally. They were also playing their best football of the year towards the end of the season, winning 6 of their last 7 games. They returned their head coach, which can't be said about USC, who brings in Lincoln Riley, Oregon with Dan Lanning, and Washington with Kalen DeBoer. Those three schools are usually considered the powerhouses of the Pac-12. Arizona State is under NCAA investigation for recruiting violations, and they have seen their star quarterback transfer out along with a handful of other players. Arizona is currently rebuilding, and UCLA has some question marks, while Colorado is not who they used to be. They also have a schedule that could provide a resume for the college football playoffs. They start the season traveling to Gainesville to play Florida in the Swamp and host San Diego State at home a few weeks later. They host USC but do have to go on the road to play UCLA, Washington State, and Oregon, which all should be tests. At the very least, you would expect them to be the South Division representatives for the Pac-12 title game, barring any insane turnaround by Lincoln Riley at USC, or UCLA finally putting it all together. The foundation is set for Utah to make a run at the playoffs this year. With that being said, there are some red flags around the Utah program. Heather Dinerich writes, This league is notorious for beating each other up. It's going to have the same problem again with Utah and USC facing each other on October 15th. The Pac-12's parity doesn't mean it's not good football. It means there's still no proven great teams to dominate the rest. Utah has fallen flat on the big stage before. In 2019, the one-lost Utes entered the Pac-12 title game against Oregon with playoff hopes on the line. With the entire selection committee watching, Utah lost to Oregon 37-15. This time, the Utes beat the number 10 Ducks, but were already out of the picture. In order to put it all together, they will have to develop consistency. It has to start on week 1, as a loss at Florida will put the Utes in a must-win situation for the rest of the season. They will need to win on the road, something they were unable to do last year against BYU, San Diego State, and Oregon State. Utah will need to play high-quality football week in and week out, and with Whittingham as their head coach, that should be possible. I do not think the window closes for Utah and a playoff berth if they do not make it this year. Cam Rising still has at least another year of eligibility, and according to Whittingham, the Utes roster during the Rose Bowl last year consisted of 70 underclassmen of their 85-man roster. 
they do a great job developing their players, and if they can't do it with Rising, then they are a crazy transfer portal quarterback away. As Josh Pate from The Late Kick puts it, Utah is a Jack Miller type of situation away from being perennial contenders. The Utes have been impressive for over two decades making 17 bowl games in the past 21 years, missing three due to their record and one because of COVID. Utah is a lot like Wisconsin where they are just a consistent top-notch quarterback play away from earning a spot. Unlike Wisconsin, Utah actually won their conference recently and doesn't really need to worry about teams like Ohio State yet. That may change quickly though if Lincoln Riley gets USC rolling. Will Utah become the next Georgia Bulldogs or will they continue to stay at the level of Wisconsin always being one or two games away? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, as well as checking out one of my other videos the algorithm knows you will love right here. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.